All right, we're here to talk about meat. So while most people in the world are talking about cutting down meat at every meal, you guys are talking about maybe increasing it. So why should meat be included in a healthy diet? Um, I'll start by saying meat's always been included in a healthy diet. Meat is what humans evolved uh, as a primary source of protein. And we're not just talking about ribeye steaks and tenderloin, but we're talking about eggs and newts and absolutely small animals as, as, as well as large animals. Um, we're talking about uh, insects, which was uh, you know, part, of that, part of that protein offering that uh, for two and a half million years you know, we took in in order to stay alive and build muscle and have the energy that we have to, to get to where we are today. So meat is 100% is part of a healthy diet. In fact, um, I'd be hard pressed to name a society or a group of people that ever survived without some form of animal protein. Exactly. Like Mark is saying, if you look at the size of the human brain, it exploded, not literally, but figuratively. It grew quite rapidly around two, two million years ago, and most scientists agree that was the advent of humans, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, eating meat, eating animals. And that, I think, nutrition shaped the way that our brains could develop in a very profound way. If you look at sources of bioavailable nutrients, animal foods are clearly far and away the best of those. And a lot of times plant-based advocates will tout nutrients in plants, but if you just look at the facts regarding the bioavailability and the presence of nutrients, animal foods are clearly the winner for those. And that would suggest you know, why the human brain grew so rapidly once we had access to these incredibly rich sources of bioavailable nutrients of all sorts, eating animals became this key to sort of unlock our continued evolution as humans and it continues to be a huge part of what makes us healthy today. Yeah, I mean, I mean we are uniquely adapted uh, to, to digest and process meat. I mean, we have transporters in the gut that are uniquely designed to take up dientri peptides that are coming from meat. I mean, if we look at, we were, pri we were primates, you know, we evolved as a primate, and there are primates that have been eating fruit for 25 million years or more, and their brain hasn't developed, and so something had to change. And, and you know, you're right, uh, the discovery of either first maybe possibly scavenging meat and then eventually learning how to organize and hunt uh, drove uh, much of that evolution. And, and, and we, are, we haven't changed. There hasn't been enough time to turn us back into herbivores, which some people are trying to do now, which is kind of crazy. Well, then wh where did we go wrong, though? Where did we get lost on this way when this is something we've been doing for all of history? I might suggest that, um, you know, the, the agri first agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago would be a sort of a starting point of our going wrong. We were hunter-gatherers up until that point. We lived in small tribes. Uh, we moved from place to place, uh, you know, because there was no way to store food. Um, it was literally a full-time job to be scavenging, hunting, and gathering. And again, we're talking about, you know, not just root shoots and berries and nuts, but, you know, small animals, birds, lizards, snakes, uh, as well as whatever we could, we could kill. And certainly scavenging. I mean, uh, a lot of uh, anthropologists would say that, that our ability to feast on a, a previous kill uh, was, you know, to be able to kind of sneak up and maybe scare the other predators away. Um, our ability to access uh, marrow by some say the first real tool was a was a hammer to crack open marrow and get at that those juicy ingredients in there. But about ten thousand years ago, someone discovered that we could grow, uh, take these seeds and grow grains, which was a great source of calories and allowed us to stay in one place and allowed us not to have to move around from from one um, uh, ecological environment to the next, but stay fixed and and as a result have more children and have more people to work the earth and create civilization and societies. And uh, so I'd say that's where we started to go wrong. And then what happened was the cheap source of calories started to supplant the quality of nutrients that we were getting largely from the broad variety as hunter-gatherers. Hmm. There's a well-known uh, scholar, Jared Diamond, who wrote Guns, Germs, and Steel. He called the advent of agriculture the worst mistake in human history, and he's termed it the cult of the seed. If you look at the paleoanthropology evidence from the Dixon Mounds and all these other fossilized records of people around that time that Mark is talking about, the health of humans clearly rapidly deteriorated once we became agrarians. There's evidence of 
many nutrient deficiencies, many infectious diseases, hyperostosis of the skull, which is probably due to deficiency of multiple minerals and vitamins, and the skeletons got smaller, they were more fragile. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that that was a really, really bad thing for us to do. Well, it was I mean, a bad also, decision. Yeah, also our brain size shrunk. I mean, yeah. we, see, we see that our brain went down by about 200 cc's. I mean, it peaked, some would say about 150,000 years ago to about 1,500 cc's, and now modern Homo sapien is about 1,300. And so that probably coincides with, I mean, some of our, basically our, some of our food supply ran out. I mean, there are people who make the argument that you know, we were eating fattier sources of meat at some point, you know, particularly megafaunal animals. And if we look at the work of Felisa Smith out of University of New Mexico, uh, she shows that the average size at the beginning of the Pleistocene about 125,000 years ago was about 500 kilograms. That was an average mammal size. And now, currently, it's about nine kilograms. And so we've, lost, we've had a tremendous loss of animal mass available to us to eat. And so as that occurred, then we became, fortunately, we were smart enough to figure out how to harness some calories from grain and other foods. Uh, and it's kept, it sustained us and it kept us alive as, as, a, as a population and it continues to do so today, but it doesn't help us to thrive optimally. It's really a suboptimal source of nutrients. It can give us calories, but they're not very nutrient rich or bioavailable. It's a, it's a good news, bad news situation for the human body, which is so resilient and we're able to go long periods of time without eating um, the, the optimal diet. We can survive, but we can't thrive. And the, you know, um, during the Irish potato famine, people lived for six months at a time on shoe leather and seaweed. You know, it wasn't an ideal source of nutrients in any way, shape, or form, but it kept people alive. So to our, you know, to our credit, we evolved these different systems by which we could extract energy from different substrates. But that does not mean that it was either what we evolved and what our genes expect today, or that it's an ideal situation for us today. Well, I think you know the capacity, because again, we, we, if, if most people agree that there's an evolution happening, I know there's people that disagree with that, but if we assume we evolved as some sort of primate, you know, we had that capacity prior to, and we maintained some of that, and then we developed through you know a more carnivorous pattern, the, the, you know the, the the system that we have today, and so we still retain some of that capacity. Like some of the vegans will point out, the only reason we have color vision was because we were plucking fruit out of the trees. Well, I'm like, well, that might have been true 30 million years ago, and why would we lose that? There would be no advantage to losing that, so we retain that from then. But we don't, you know, we don't need that at this point. We didn't develop this shoulder, this throwing arm, uh, to throw rocks at bananas. I mean, that's not why that happened. I think there's a pretty clear difference between food that's survival food and food that's optimal for humans.